I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to do. But Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. Because broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. shepherd boy and made him a king so I'm gonna trust you and give you everything I'll be a conqueror cause you fight for me I'll be a champion claiming your victory so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den give me hope in the wilderness Give me a heart like David Lord, be my defense So I can face my giants With confidence I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the walls I won't stop until I see them fall I'm gonna stand up, step out when you call Jesus, Jesus I'm gonna sing Shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. Gonna stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. Be faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. seated. Good morning, The Rock. My name is Mike. I get to be the pastor here at uh, The Rock. We call our forever family. That's what we are through faith in Jesus. I have been away for the past two weeks, so it is good to be back with you. I want to once again thank Reverend Sommerfeld and our Vice President of the Congregation, Tim Mall, for leading while I was gone. And it's great to have people like that to fill in and bring God's Word in my absence. So this morning, I want to go through some announcements that are uh, important for you to be aware of in the life of our congregation, our life together. Don't forget about those information cards and prayer cards that are in your row that you can make use of and place them in the basket as it goes by during our second song today. Uh, you can uh, include a prayer request if you want in the basket, or if you'd like that prayer request prayed over today in worship, hold that up during the second song, and I'll come around and pick those up. For those of you who are joining us on the live stream this morning, welcome. Glad that you're joining us too. And there's some points of contact for you if you need information or prayer as well during the course of the week. Blue Valley Community Action is a partner of ours in our building on the lower level. And there are ways that you can be a part of that and help. And one of those is to help sort food between the hours of 9 and 4. You don't have to make an appointment or call ahead. You can just come there and they will be happy to tell you uh, what you can do and how to do it. And they would appreciate that help. 
We're going to still continue to collect uh, adult and child-sized coats and shoes. There is a collection box in the Rock Cafe that you can place those in still during the month of January. Also, we always collect an item for their pantry, and it changes every month. This month is soap and shampoo, so make use of that and bring some of extra bottles and bars and all those kinds of things of soap and shampoo to help that out. Also, our youth are and have been uh, preparing to attend the National Youth Gathering in 2022 next summer in Houston, and they have an envelope wall out there in the cafe. It's on the, the west wall, and what you do is you choose an envelope from that wall. You fill in the uh, uh, fill it with the amount that's on the outside, and then there's a box next to it that you can place that in, and there are all kinds of ways to give from one to a hundred, so uh, please uh, make use of that as well as t- um, all the other ways that you can help them out as they prepare for that faith journey. We have some new opportunities to grow in faith in 2022, uh, and you can sign up for those in the Rock Cafe on the counter that are on the, the south wall there right underneath the Rock Cafe sign. There are three sign-up sheets. You also can sign up online. You can go to the website to the Connect tab and drop down to Adults and click on that. And then on the left side, you'll see those opportunities there where you can sign up online. So the first uh, one is uh, Being Lutheran. That starts on January 20th, led by myself and Tim Mall. The next one is uh, Faith That Sees Through Culture. That starts this Tuesday night. That's an online uh, Bible study, I guess you can call it, that uh, I'll be leading. And as well as a men's breakfast starts this Saturday morning at uh, 7 o'clock right here at The Rock. We'll be talking about Joseph Carpenter of Steel, and I'll be leading that one as well. Snow removal, uh, we're still looking for people to help with that, to clear sidewalks. We've got a lot of new equipment that uh, is fun to operate, so contact uh, Dennis Seavers if you'd like to be on that crew. That's a new screen. I've never seen a white one before. That's what the snow looks like. Well, how about what we do then is let's uh, stand and greet one another this morning while we're letting our media uh, catch up. Let's do that. All right, as you're making your way back to your spots, don't forget that uh, during our second song here, real shortly, that we're going to be coming around collecting those prayer requests as well as passing around uh, the basket for so that we have the opportunity to uh, demonstrate generosity in the ministry that God has given us here to share in together. Uh, there are other options in which you can give a financial gift online. Those are on the screen before you, as well as always, you can place a direct gift in the basket as it's passed by this morning. How about our theme verse for today? There we go. Ephesians 2.10. Would you speak this with me? For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And let's confess our faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit using these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and move in amongst us right now in these moments that we gather in worship. As we continue to move through these first days of a new year, breathe new life in us by the power of your words of life that are all sure and certain to us in Jesus. As we discern what that direction of that we are to go in this new, new year, we pray that uh, you would work through that word that you promised to work in and through, that you would also work through other followers of Jesus that you place in our lives to encourage and strengthen us. Most of all this day, Lord, we ask that you would put a hedge of protection around us so that the evil one would not keep your word from entering into our hearts and lives and producing fruit for your kingdom. So, Bless us to that end, Lord. In the strong and precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Dark and all alone, growing comfortable. Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believe. Safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep, and it's time. your veins it's more than blood's kind of love that washes sin away and the door is open wide and the stone's been rolled aside the old is gone the light has come so rise up take a breath you're alive now can't you hear out of the dark he's given us new resurrected hearts
Please be seated. Psalm 51 says this. Psalm 51 is known as a penitential psalm in in the Bible where the psalmist writes about the weight of his sin and the guilt that is a result of it. And verse 2 says this, Wash me thoroughly from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Washing is something that we probably do every day in some way, shape, or form to get rid of something that we don't want there, right? Well, God in his word says that we have this thing, this condition literally called sin, that it's not the way that he created us to be. But we all have it as part of us. In fact, sin is what we are. And yet God calls us and invites us to confess that sin in us, sin that we are, so that he can wash us clean in Jesus. In fact, wash us clean in his blood shed on the cross and make us new. Make us right with him. And so I want to encourage you to join me in doing that today and praying this prayer of confession so that God will wash us like he promises to wash us when we confess our sins to him. Let's pray this prayer of confession together. And then at the end of the prayer, I'll give you some time for personal confession with God. Dear Father in heaven, I confess to you that I am contaminated with sin. I haven't honored your name in so many different ways, in what I have said and done, as well as in the sinful thoughts that flood my mind. I haven't let your love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been stained with sin. I'm sorry for all this and ask for your forgiving grace. Because of Jesus. Hear these words from Titus 3. But the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared. He saved us. It wasn't because of the good things we had done. It was because of his mercy. He saved us by washing away our sins. We were born again. The Holy Spirit gave us new life. Let that imagery sink in for you today, that imagery of being clean and new and fresh and beginnings. Because that's what God gives to you through faith in Jesus each day as he forgives your sins and makes you new. So as your pastor, it's my privilege to proclaim to you then the place and the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, what? Amen. Amen. Amen means, yes, it shall be so. And it is through faith in Jesus. Let's sing.
You know, I just want to say that uh, watching or participating with you in worship uh, via the live stream the last couple Sundays, uh, our band sounds phenomenal through the live stream, and I think uh, we're blessed by all these 
gifted and talented musicians that lead us in worship every week, and we probably don't thank them enough for the way in which God has gifted them and how they bless us with that. So let's, uh, would you join me in giving a round of applause to them and thank God for their gifts? Just incredible, as well as the folks in the back, too. They're kind of unseen. They they keep things going when the software works right. It's not their fault. It's just sometimes crashes and and the, the, the sound and the cameras and everything. Uh, they are a blessing, surely, to us as well. Maybe that's also a time, too, where we can say, hey, if you'd like to be a part of that, um, you surely can. You know, Just let us know. We can get you set up and get into a rotation and schedule in which you can serve in that way because it is such a blessing to the people of God here at The Rock in this community as well as uh, beyond, you know, all across the country and world through the live stream. So that what you're seeing right up there is a picture of a volcano. Volcano de Agua is what it is called. It is not an active volcano at this moment in the country of Guatemala. Uh, We did go and uh, visit a volcano that was active. What was it in May? I think was the last time that it was active or March or something like that. Um, Got to to visit uh, that, walk on uh, a place that just months before was molten lava, but now it was obviously rock and cooled down. Uh, It did a number on my shoes. I know that. It's very, very sharp. But today is the day in which we get to hear the report from the Guatemala Mission Team, which I was privileged to be a part of. And our theme verse that we have in use today that we're going to look at is also the theme verse for the the mission team and when they uh, went to the Santa Cruz Mission in Amatalan, Guatemala, to serve uh, the people in that region. It says, For we are God's masterpiece, for he has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God has created each of us individually and uniquely and so wonderfully as his own masterpiece so that he can work in and through us to bring the hope in Jesus to those that we come into contact with, whether that be in our daily relationships with family, work, friends, right here, or whether that be beyond our borders in a place like Guatemala. So um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to invite the team up here, and uh, they'll introduce themselves as they give uh, each part of their report Uh, So, uh, team, come on up. I think there's four of us here. One of us is ill. Another one is uh, far away. Can't be here, right? So, yeah, come on. You can stand right there. Yep, Jen, you're first. But before that, I want to share with you the picture. This is a picture that... uh, we took right before we were heading into worship on the Sunday afternoon that we arrived in in Guatemala. Uh, we are minus one. Michaela wasn't able to get there with us because of some travel complications, but she arrived a, f- a day or so later. The next picture is while we were at the Guatemala National Forest or National Park, I believe it was, and we were overlooking the lake at, at Matatlan, just a wonderful view up there. And then the next photo is a photo of our journey up to volcanic Pacaya, the volcano that we took a a journey up to with some of the teens that uh, we got to minister to while we were there, and they'll speak to that in a few few moments. That is a point in the journey where I thought I was going to die. I did. Boy, I was up there. You keep going up and up and up, and the air gets lighter and lighter, and it's like, (sighs) move around, move around, drink some water, drink some water. There were plenty of places to stop along the way, but once we got to that point, I believe it was not too far that we reached the summit. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I told any of the team members that, but boy, that was the one point I thought, oh, if, if Lord, take me now. If this is the place, this is the place. That's all right with me. That's all right with me. So what our day, uh, what our week looked like is that we 
we uh, sense that God was moving us to lead in three different ways, and that was through a vacation Bible school type uh, vehicle or tool to connect with elementary students throughout the week, as well as a time where we could connect with teenagers. So there's a group of us that worked with teenagers each day, and then also with uh, women in the community. Since men have uh, unfortunately uh, removed themselves or or uh, disengaged themselves from life with their families because of other cultural influences within the the country, um, women are the you know the main parts of the family that raise the the children and and bring uh, values and. Uh, encouragement to kids as they're growing up and, and teach them things or the nurturers. And so we wanted to include that as as well. And uh, God did amazing things during this week. And uh, I can't wait for you to hear uh, each of our team members share some of those things. So I'll let Jen, you start off. Oh, yes. This is the, these are the three questions that I ask them to give an answer to at the end of their uh, part of this, this report. And really, I guess the way I see it, it's the three ways to ask the same question. Is that how did God mess with you on this trip? What had the biggest impact on your life? And how did God change the trajectory of your life as a result of going on this trip to Guatemala? So they'll be they'll be answering those questions as they wrap up their particular parts of the presentation. So now Jen, you can uh begin. And uh people of the rock remember I know you will, but give them lots of grace because they're nervous up here in sharing uh with you. So, uh go ahead, Jen. Well, we had a really great week with Vacation Bible School. Um, with our first day, we had 23 kids come. And by our fourth day, our final day, we had 43 kids come. So we doubled our numbers throughout the week from word of mouth and kids just telling um, their friends to come to. Uh, 20 of those kids had never been to the church before. So this was a great opportunity to get kids to the church and hopefully be the starting point of um, their faith walk with God. These kids have been um, not in the church since March 2020. When COVID hit, the country pretty much shut down. These kids haven't been in school. They still haven't been in school. And they haven't been doing anything face-to-face -face at uh, the church. They've been doing some virtual activities, but as you can imagine, as a developing country, that doesn't really work very well, especially when they don't have access to, to uh, being able to do things virtually. So this was pretty exciting for the kids to be back in the church for the first time and to be a part of something. So this was kind of the kickoff to them hopefully going back face-to-face -face, um, with activities with the kids. Uh, Dr. Christian Stein, as you can see in the picture, did join us. So that was pretty exciting. Um, each day we kicked off with an opening activity. And I think there's another picture of there playing with Play-Doh. You would not imagine how much these kids loved Play-Doh. It's not that picture, but I'm sure we'll get to it. Um, these kids loved Play-Doh. We planned on doing it for about 10 minutes while kids came in and then get started with activities. We played with Play-Doh probably 40 minutes one day because they didn't want to put it away. They loved playing with Play-Doh, something maybe they hadn't done before. Um, and uh, they just enjoyed that part so much. So it was kind of fun with the opening activities to see just the little simple things that brought them such great joy. Um, after we did an opening activity, we had music time and had some songs that we sang each day and that they, they learned. And then Dr. Christian Stein came out for a experiment that we tied to a Bible verse and to a theme for the day. And then we tried to tie the craft and our activity time along with um, the lesson that we learned that day. And then we would close with prayer and close with reviewing the Bible verse that they learned that day. So we spend a couple hours with the children each morning in this capacity. Um, oh, and snacks. I didn't mention snacks. Snacks were a fun time. They really enjoyed any snacks that we brought. And we tried to do some things in their culture, but also we did like dirts and worm and different types of snacks that maybe they hadn't had that they really enjoyed as well. We also had lots of soccer time going during downtime, um, the universal activity, I guess, that everyone kind of enjoyed. Um, how did God mess with me or how did God work with me? I've been going to Guatemala since 2008, almost yearly up until 
uh, COVID hit. So it'd been a couple years since I had been there, and I've been working in the same ministry for those for those years. So it was definitely a blessing to be back. And you probably hear the saying, it's blessed to be a blessing. And I can attest that that is definitely true. Anytime you give yourself to other people, you are also blessed in return. And it's amazing to see how God works through those situations and how I leave every time thinking that I gained more than I possibly gave to the people that I worked with. I also am inspired by Dr. Ellery and Liz. So Dr. Ellery is the doctor that's in charge of this mission, but he's also the pastor at the church. So it's a medical clinic and a, um, a, and a church. And him and his wife are amazing, and they are the perfect example of missional living. And it inspires me to bring that back into my own life here in Seward, Nebraska. They have a home in Guatemala City, but they take the time to go to Amat Salon and to live there part of the week and to serve in this area. So what we come and do for a week, they're doing every week of their life, which is just amazing to see that and uh, um, definitely makes me want to strive to do that more in my life here in, in Seward. God also messed with me to continue working on my Spanish. Um, I took four years in high school. Obviously, that wasn't enough. And over the years, I have been working on my Spanish, and I'm in an immersion program out of Omaha for the last year. And I talked more in Spanish this trip than I have in the past, um, still not fluent, so I'm still working on it, but it was exciting to see the progress, but also to encourage me to, to keep working on that as well. I just want to encourage all of you, if you get the opportunity to go on a mission trip, go. Um, I know it can be uncomfortable. You might think, I don't know the language, I don't know the people, I don't know where I would be staying, I don't like big bugs, there are big bugs in Central America, I don't know what's holding you back, but, but definitely go. Um, when you go beyond your comfort level, I think you see God in ways that you would not otherwise see him. So I really encourage you to take that opportunity to go serve um, and love, like, like uh, Keegan Schertz says. Yeah, so next will be the teen time that uh, was led by Keegan and Aubrey and, and Michaela. So I'll let you go ahead and talk about that. We can put up a, one of the first pictures there. Okay, so every day, Aubrey, Sonia, Mickey, and I um, spent a couple hours in the afternoon leading teen time, and um, it was really cool. We had like 20 kids come by the end of the week, um, and we just did lots of fun activities and really connected with them. So we started every day with a devotion led by one of us, and then um, moved into an activity. So I'll just briefly talk about the things we did. So the first day, we um, played a name game for... A very long time. <laughs> they loved it. So everyone like got a different name from someone else in the group, and you had to get your team standing. So super competitive and easy, too, because it was just names. It wasn't language. And they absolutely loved it. So that was super fun just to get to know them and their personalities. And they're all super funny and vibrant, and <laughs> we had a great time with them. So then the next day we did tie-dye, which was really cool because I don't think they had ever done that. So they got to choose, they got to make their own shirt and choose the colors, and they got to take it home at the end of the week. So that was fun. And then we played the name game after that. And then soccer. And then, <laughs> and then more soccer. And then, yeah. So then the third day we, um, we did nail art, which you can see in the picture. They took nails into boards and did designs of crosses and hearts and stuff with string, which was really cool. They got to make something to take home that was pretty into their homes. And um, we got to see their creative sides in that. And then we played the name game in soccer. And <laughs> the uh, fourth day, we made them a scavenger hunt, which was really cool to watch them all running around. Um, finding unique things, competing, and then getting prizes that we'd brought from home. And then we played the name game in soccer. And <laughs> and <laughs> it was, okay, and then Friday was really special because our team got to hike the volcano, like Pastor Mike talked about. And we got to bring several of the teens along with us. And so we got a lot closer to them, um, which led to a proposal. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, that was really cool. And just... <laughs> getting to know them and seeing the beautiful volcano. And that night, we actually got to do a campfire with all of the teens. Uh, Mickey led a brilliant devotion. Um, Pastor Mike, or Pastor Dr. Ellery led us in campfire songs. And we all wrote, like, what was burdening us on pieces of paper and then burned them, like, giving them up to God, which was really special. 
And the hardest part was then having to say goodbye to them at the end of that because we'd all gotten really close and it was really fun the whole week. And then, um, so yeah, and I want to talk about who I got closest to is Sophia. She was um, Dr. Ellery's niece or something. And so she was staying at the mission house all week with us, eating with us, hanging out between sessions. And she was 10 years old. She acts like she's, like she's 16. Um, she's funny. She brought so much joy to our entire team. And um, yeah, so because she was working on her English. So she, we helped her with English, and she helped us with Spanish. So that was fun. Um, yeah, so it was just so cool to see all the teens and how we could connect with them, even though not all of us are very fluent like Mickey, and um, just to be able to meet them and their personalities and have fun with them. So what really impacted me on this trip, probably so many things impacted me, um, but I especially was impacted by the little kids because these kids don't have very much in the way of worldly stuff but they have so much in the way of heavenly stuff. When, they, when you like watch them in VBS, they are singing their hearts out and dancing, and it's just so cool to watch their spirit and love and joy for each other. And they're not entitled, and they're resilient, and it was just really cool to see. It was inspirational. Um, God messed with me, probably just getting me out of my routine every day, and just being able to focus on loving and serving others for an entire week was a really cool opportunity to um, actually do, like, to work like God wants us to, and it was very fulfilling as well and peaceful, so that was really cool, and it's definitely changed the trajectory of my life because now I want to do mission work in my future and study Spanish, so it's really cool. Okay, yeah, so my name is Mickey, and I actually did come two days late, which was tragic and super sad, but it was amazing because I have been on mission trips before, but this one was different in the way that it impacted me. So I saw Keegan, specifically I was impacted by how others were being impacted on the trip, specifically Keegan and Aubrey. They were completely, okay, so for example, when we're here planning, I'm like, oh my goodness, they're so reserved and stuff. You might think that, right? No, wrong. They are crazy. They're loud. They're crushing kids in soccer. And it was just an absolute blast. So one thing that they did was, that I was super impressed by was they would write a Bible study, and then in the morning they'd give it to us. And so for high school girls to do that for, like, older people, that's impressive to me. And then um, just leading teen time, like, I came in late, and, yeah, I helped whatever, bring energy or something. But, like, they were the ones leading it, and the kids had completely connected with them. So to see that leadership opportunity that they got, I was touched by how God was working through those two specifically. Um, another thing that touched my life was... Just the lack of materialism they have there. Like, they don't have that opportunity of those resources. And I, this sounds like maybe dumb, but I would say that I was jealous of that aspect because here we have so many distractions from family time and even, like, going to church or whatever because of the resources we had. These people, they need Jesus. Like, they rely on him for every day. And it just amazed me. And I, it made me, like, want to throw my phone in the lake, honestly. And so how it changed the trajectory of my life, I'm going um, on a three-month mission trip to Costa Rica, coming up in, a, like, probably 15 days or something. And that's hard because I feel called to serve and do mission work because what she said, the family there, like, they give their lives up to serve. And so I feel like I can do that for three months I'm, and then do it when I come back in Seward, too. But, yeah, I'm just amazed by what God is doing down in Guatemala, and I just am continually pr praying that he, like what I've learned there, can carry on to the rest of my life because it was impactful. So I would say, like, if I had advice for you guys, if you get the opportunity to go on a mission trip, yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, there are very big bugs. And, yes, like, it's, it's hard, like you're in a completely different area, but you getting the chance to serve and see God in a different way and just saying like, God, here I am, use me, 
that is impactful. And so if you get that opportunity, take it. Or if you get the opportunity to send someone else because they're interested in it, because maybe it's not a call for every single one in this room, because there's mission work right here in Seward, Nebraska as well. But I would just say, if you get that opportunity or you can send somebody, do it. Because God is working here and in Guatemala and all over the world. Last thing, and then I'll give the mic away, I promise. Um, there's this verse, and it like we all chose like Guatemala life verses, um, and it said, it's in Hebrews 12, 2, and it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So here at The Rock, we are surrounded by other people. So share your story. Like, what has God been teaching you lately? We can do that here. Just because I went to Guatemala and God touched me in a certain way there doesn't mean that God's not working in your life right now here. So share with each other and be in community because when we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we can remind ourselves of Jesus, who is the founder and perfecter of our faith. So it's a continual growth. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I talked fast. Okay. <laughs> My husband's always telling me I talk too fast, so I will try to go slow. Um, I'm Jill, and I um, am a healthcare provider. So when I've gone on these trips before, it's been in a medical capacity. So this was a bit of a stretch for me um, because I didn't have my stethoscope and my script and my here's what I do. I go and I see people, 50 of them, one after the other, really fast. Um, and in a way, that's easy because I know I know how to do that, and I can speak that Spanish. It's fairly limited, <laughs> pain, and and you know, there's there's a few words I can do, and I felt comfortable. So, this time around, um, that wasn't the purpose of this trip. Um, so I was helping with the ladies' ministry. So, these women, like Pastor Mike said, um, they pretty much bear. Um, most responsibility for raising these families, supporting these families. They work hard. They don't get pampered a lot, if at all. They live in 10 by 10 shacks with dirt floors, and they do their laundry in a lake. Um, and they bring their kids here, and some of them work at the church, and actually a lot of them do a, a kind of sewing ministry um, to make a little money. So we kind of wanted to do something special for them just to pamper them um, and help them feel loved. So we, our devotional um, time, we use this um, Bible study by Deb Burma called Living the Chocolate Life because chocolate, I decided, is, is the international language for women, and we brought um, chocolate every day of different sorts to eat. Um, and we ate lots of chocolate, and we did crafts, and we did we made some body scrub, and we tried to focus on thankfulness and um, just God's love for us, and we, we did a little gratitude journal we made, and we made these banners um, where they could hang Bible verses and just things they're thankful for to kind of decorate their houses with ribbons and things like that. And um, it was kind of neat because we shared verses with each other. We each wrote our favorite verse on a, on a card and gave it to each other so we could pray for each other uh, when we went home, and then we, um, they all took them home. And the final day, we went and did a prayer walk around the community and just prayed for the whoever's houses we passed and prayed for the people in the church and um, kind of just encouraged them to continue to pray for each other and, and, and the fact that we would be praying for them. Um, and I just feel like it was a special time for them. I, I felt frustrated by the language. I feel like that's what messed with me the most since I didn't have my medical script and my medical job I was doing. Um, to connect in a deeper spiritual way is harder when you don't have the language. Um, so I guess for me, I really want to work on that, like Jen said, before I go back again. Um, but also, I feel like just the realization of the power of prayer. I'm a fixer. Um, my family will tell you that. If they have a problem, I want to fix it. Um, I'm not really happy when I can't fix it, and I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. And so that's me fixing it, not what God's plan is. So kind of really stepping back and saying, okay, A, God has the power, and that power is in prayer, and we can pray for those people far away, close, the people here. I can pray for them every day, and, and that's more powerful than anything physically I could do to help them or fix them. Um, so that was a huge takeaway for me. And then also just my role here. Um, I work in gastroenterology, and um, my son would say butts and guts. Um, I've done it for 20 years. I, I feel like since I'm a fixer, we don't always fix things in that field. It's not like ER, we have a cut and you sew it up. And, and I've often thought, oh, I'm going to come, I want to change fields, I want to do something else, I want to do surgery. And I feel like God really told me, no, stay where you're at. And the whole, the week since I've been back, I've really just prayed that he can use me with my patients. And um, 
most of our fixing is not physical on this planet. You know, it's in our heart, it's in our souls, it's in our minds. And in Chinese medicine, the, the intestine is the, the center for sadness and, and depression. And I think that's very true. If we, if we listen to people, um, people in my clinic all the time, there's sadness and brokenness and hurt everywhere. And it's not in Guatemala, it's, it's the world condition. It's the sinful world we live in. So just really um, opening my heart to where God's using me here, not looking for something else or something different, but then also lifting up those people in prayer when we're away. So um, it was very impactful. It always is, like Jen said and Mickey said, if you have a chance to go somewhere, if you feel called to do that, do that. But our mission is here. Our mission is slowing down and listening and being there for people. Our world is messed up. Um, and everybody needs God, and everybody needs people to show God to them and to listen to them. So that's what I took away. They did a really good job presenting, didn't they? We're blessed by them. You can go ahead and be seated. As I reflected on those three questions myself for today and being just inspired and encouraged by the other team members while there and even the days since then, uh, I, I kept landing on this word hope. Um, the situation in Guatemala, economically and politically, is not good. Lots of corruption. Uh, power is in the hands of a few, and it just shifts from those around to those few. Making a better life for yourself is almost non-existent. You are born in the family that you're born in, and you will probably stay right there doing whatever it is that your family does. And so when we get the opportunity to come and share Jesus with people, I, I, I kept going back to this idea of hope that the hope that they have in Jesus is not simply for this life, but it's for the next. They're looking forward to the life that's real life, the life that never ends, the life that is free of power grabs and corruption and all the effects of sin. And how you and I are so affected by the Western mindset that we live in. The mindset that desires and expects instant gratification for everything. Mickey said she felt like throwing her phone into the lake. Or sometimes I felt guilty that I had it in my hand. You see, when we get this mindset in our Western culture that you and I live in, the United States of America, that our hope in Jesus is only for right here and now, the Bible says we're missing the boat. Because, see, we connect oftentimes and too often that our hope in Jesus is for the right here, right here and right now. And we correlate hope in Jesus with expectations of Jesus for our lives right now. You know, we, we expect things from, from Jesus like to, to give us whatever we ask for, you know. And if Jesus doesn't give me what I ask for, then I get mad and I pout and I don't connect with him for a while. We treat Jesus as like some genie. Because we think in our Western world we deserve it, right? We have all these freedoms. I deserve to have this. I expect Jesus to see things my way. 
I expect Jesus to clearly tell me why things are the way they are in my life and to give me a clear answer that I don't have to figure out myself or seek him at all. I expect Jesus to not allow the bad stuff to happen to me or my family. I expect Jesus to keep away the cancer and the Alzheimer's and the accidents and the sudden loss of life and all the addictions. And when Jesus doesn't live up to my expectations or yours, well, you can expect us to look to someone else or to something else for that, right? We don't want to admit that, but that's the way it is. And even though that is the way it is, God is what it is in all things. God is what it is in bringing hope in Jesus each and every day, even into the times in our lives when we have our hope in Jesus flipped around and totally messed up, messed up. hope in Jesus to, to people who don't have all the worldly things that we have, but they have their hearts set on what is yet to come. Hope in Jesus, my friends in Christ, is more than just for this life. Hope in Jesus is for eternity. And there's so many things that occur and happen in your life and mine that in light of eternity, they don't really matter. And yet we think they do. We get consumed by them instead of consuming ourselves with Jesus and the hope that is ours in him. I want to share some passages with you before we close today from Psalm 146. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, and he remains faithful forever. I underlined that word, hope. You know, if you go to Psalm 146, which I have open right here, my NIV translation, every time the word Lord is listed, it's all in capital letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. And I've underlined them. You know why? I guess it's one of my things that I do, and, 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 and it strikes me because I need to be reminded of that word, Lord. That is capitalized because in Hebrew, that is God's personal name, Yahweh, the God of the promise, the God who remains faithful forever, the God who promises the, that we have this hope in Jesus. It will come to fruition when we see him face to face. God will do what he says he's going to do for us in this life as well, bringing us forgiveness and life in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The blood shed on the cross is for you today and every day in the future. The life that Jesus lives right now is the life that you and I live today and will forever in his presence, face to face with him and all who've gone before us. It is a reality. It's not wishy-washy thinking. It's not, well, maybe it'll happen. I hope so. No. It is the truth. It is real. Because the Lord, our God, says it is so. Now that quote that Tim shared last week from C.S. Lewis says, Indeed, indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong. <laughs> but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum. 
but he cannot Im- because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. So I want to leave you today with some passages of hope that is real that is sure, that is certain. So that in those times in your life and mine when our hope gets flipped around into the things and the people surround us, that we can be focused on the God who is our hope, who is what it is. And give us confidence and strength to live tomorrow. And however many days he gives us this side of heaven. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about, we, about what we do not see. Confidence in what we hope for. Assurance about we, what we do not see. Think of your faith in Jesus as that, as confident hope. It is true. It is real. 1 Corinthians 15. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ indeed has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You know, if we only have hope in Jesus for the here and now, Why do we want to put up anymore with persecution or hardships or sufferings or anything like that? That's why the passage says we should be pitied more than all people. But Jesus indeed has been raised from the dead. Paul's speaking here about the resurrection of the dead, that it is a reality, that it is going to happen. Jesus himself is the first fruits. In the Old Testament, people were... Required by the laws of Moses to bring the first, the very first parts of the harvest and dedicate them to the Lord, trusting that God would provide the rest as he promised. How fitting then that the inspired writer Paul makes that connection for you and me, that Jesus is the first fruits of what is to come in the real life that God has planned for us with him. And we can count that it will happen, that God will provide what he says he's going to do. Jesus seals the deal. And too often we forget. Romans 8.18 I consider our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Our minds cannot imagine what a life lived without the presence of sin is going to be like. Even in our own bodies. I won't have a sore neck anymore. Hopefully I'll have hair again. Hair's kind of overrated, but I like a little more color. I mean, just think about those things. Time. Who cares? You ever seen a clock like that on the wall? It says, who cares? I like that. I think that's the way heaven's going to be like. Who cares? Who cares what time it is? This is eternity, man. You know, you start thinking about things like that, and it just blows your mind away, and there's even so much more. Think of those things when going through those hardships and difficulties in your life. One day, that won't be anymore. And finally, Philippians 3. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. What is for Jesus is for us. Jesus, at this very moment, is fully God and fully man with a glorified body, and so will you and I be that way as well one day. One day. So 
So put your hope in the Lord. Be encouraged by these passages of hope in the, in the one who gave his very best to, to redeem and restore you to himself with his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. And allow him to work in and through you to connect to those people that need hope. Not just wishy-washy thinking or wishy-washy hope, but sure and certain hope in Jesus. When I was doing the part of Dr. Christian Stein on the last day of a science experiment, I told them what I've told you before. I told them I don't say goodbye. Goodbyes are sad, aren't they? Yeah. I said, I'll, said, I'll see you later. Because the hope that we have in Jesus, that is true. That we will see one another again. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the hope that you've given us in Jesus. Too often, Lord, we get that hope all mixed up. Our hope becomes misplaced in the things of this world and even in people. Forgive us for that and in that forgiveness make us new. Set us back on the right track, upon the trajectory in which you have for us in being a connecting point of Jesus to others. Lord, we lift up to you in prayer today those who need uh, healing, healing of various uh, kinds. Um, for Pat, diagnosed with leukemia. For Blake, battling uh, COVID and pneumonia. For Tamara, who is disabled and, and lonely. Lord, we pray that you would continue to surround these and all whom are on our hearts and minds today with your presence and that they would know the real and present hope and love of Jesus that can sustain them through any hardships that they may be facing in this life, looking forward to the life that is real life in eternity with you. We celebrate with Jim and his family as he observes a 90th birthday celebration with his family and extended family. What a gift life is and to live 90 of them under your grace. What a blessing and, and uh, awe-inspiring thing it is. So bless them this day in that celebration. We pray for our nation today, Lord, as well. Our, our president, our representatives and senators, our our Supreme Court justices, all who are in leadership positions over us, whether that be at the uh, national level or at the state and local level, Lord, give them wisdom and discernment in the decisions that they make. We pray that uh, they would make decisions that would follow your word of life in Scripture. Lord, for those who are homeless, provide shelter for them and care and and what they need in these cold days of winter. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to give health and healing to all that are a uh, part of our lives, that whom we love and that you do as well. These things, Lord, and whatever else you would have us ask, we bring before you uh, confidently in the strong and precious name of Jesus as he has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One more time, our theme verse from Ephesians 2. I'd ask that you would say this with me. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago and bring hope to the people that we are in contact with. Let's stand and sing our closing song together.
Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me praising your name no matter what comes. I can count the times I've called your name some broken night. And you showed up to patch me up like you do every time. I get amnesia. I get keep coming around. Yeah, ain't, ain't no, no way you'll ever let me down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Raising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where. Tell me, is he good? He is good. Tell me, is he God? He is God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like the sun in the morning. I know you're gonna be there every day So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'd be Without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top Tell me, is he good? He is good. Tell me, is he God? He is God. He is good God Almighty. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning. Love him in the noontime. Love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty. I hope you'll find When the sun goes down, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noon time, Jesus when the sun goes down. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good God.